Hello, this is Rabbi Shlomo Zalman Bregman of the Jewish Executive Learning Network. I'm uh, pre-recording before Tisha B'Av, a couple hours away, a special message for you. Hopefully, Divrei Chizuk, words of inspiration, different ideas you can reflect on as the holiday is upon us. Obviously, the, the, the holiday of Tisha B'Av falls in the Hebrew month of Av, the Hebrew month of Av, which means in Hebrew, in Lashon HaKadosh, it means Father. Question is, why? Why is the month of Av when we have the worst events in Jewish history, the temples were destroyed, other tragedies. Why is that named for a month that's called Av, which means Father? So the Kutzke Rebbe had a nice explanation. He said, let's say you walk into Shul. You walk into some Shul and you see a kid, there's a child over there, and people are being nice to him. A man's being nice to him. You don't know if the person being nice to him, it's his father, maybe it's a stranger being nice to the kid. But said the Kutzker, you walk into that shul and you see that child, he's getting a pot, he's getting a zetz, he's getting smacked around. You know that that's, a, that's not some stranger doing that, that's that kid's father. That's the father doing that. So said the Kutzker, he said that's why the month uh, is called of. He said the Jewish people, we got some of the biggest hits, the biggest zetzes, the biggest, the biggest rebukes we ever had in our history, they fell in this month. And he said, and we have to know that it's only in a month when it's clearly coming from the Av, from the Father, that could such things happen to us. Now, we don't have to look into Jewish history for thousands of years to see how this month is a time when a lot of tragedies have befallen us and it's not an easy time. We only have to look at the world around us today, contemporary events, Middle East, problems in Eretz Yisrael, the war. We know exactly what it means to be in Gaulis, to be in exile, and to suffer during the month of Av. We know exactly what it means. Sometimes we go through a three weeks, three weeks uh, from the 17th of Tammuz up to Tisha B'Av, and it's harder to get in the mood. Other times Hashem orchestrates current events. It makes it a lot easier to feel what the month is about and what being in Gaulis is about. You know, when we look at contemporary events, it's not very hard to feel like you're in Gaulis. 60, 70 years ago, the world lived with the never again and the Holocaust and this and that. There would be no more anti-Semitism. People thought, just look what's going on in the world. Go look what's going on in Paris. Riots, stores being broken, go, riots, pro-Hamas, pro, pro, uh, pro pro-Palestinian, anti-Jewish, whether it's in the streets of Miami Beach, Chicago, New York, everywhere you want, everywhere you look in the world, you can feel that happening. Now, I'm going to tell you, and this is not my opinion, the G'daylem have been speaking about this for a long period of time. We are definitely on the cusp of Mashiach coming, God willing. And when I say we're in the era of the Ichvaz of the Mashiach, the footsteps of Mashiach, I don't mean that in a vague sense. I mean at the end of that era of the footsteps of Mashiach. Now, those people who listen to my Shiorim on Torah anytime or in general know that I'm a source-based person. So I'll give you some sources. We're definitely at the end of the pre-Mashiach era. The Gemara in Sanhedrin says in 97a that the era of pre-Mashiach will be a period of time in which those people, those Jews who fear sin, will be despised. If you remember a couple weeks ago before the war started, what were people speaking about? Remember what people were speaking about? What people were speaking about was that the people who study Torah full time, they shouldn't be doing that. They should be in the army. People who were basically involved in Yerush Hashem full time and weren't being liked very much. That was the last thing we were speaking about uh, pr before the last couple weeks of current events. I'll give you another example. The Gemara says in Sanhedrin on the next page on 98a that Mashiach is going to come in an era when it's hard for a person to find the job. That's not my opinion. That's the Gemara. As the head of the Jewish Executive Learning Network, I can tell you, smart, young, impressive people they find it hard many times to get a job. <laughs> we find this skyrocketing unemployment, a lot of things going on. If you look at the modern state of Israel, you find a lot of reflection of things that the Chazal told us already going to be and the commentaries before Mashiach comes. For example, I pulled for you quickly, the Maharsha says on Sanhedrin 98a that the beginning of the ingathering of the exiles at the time of Mashiach is going to be an era when the Jewish people have some measure of political independence, some measure of political independence. Look at the world around us. Eretz Yisrael, the state, we want to do what we have to do to take care of business against those who seek to destroy us, and we don't have complete in political independence. We have some measure, because every time we want to do something, we have to pick our finger up in the wind, see what is the UN, public opinion, CNN, Obama, and everybody else in the world has to say, you know? So this was predicted. Also, I could tell you, if you look in the Ramban, the Radak, the Abarbanel, and the Malbim, they all speak about 
how the ingathering of the exiles into the, into, into the land of Israel right before Mashiach is going to come would only come about by permission of the nations of the world, which we know in 1948 the UN voted that we can be able to come and we're very much dependent upon the nations of the world in the pre-Mashiach era in our ingathering in our land. At the end of the day though, it says it clearly in, in the Gemara and Medrash and Shas and Tanakh, that we will have to be in the land of Israel at the end of days, we're going to become increasingly isolated. That all of those things and all of those people and all of those forces that we believed in, that we thought would, would help us, that we thought would be there to take care of us, they're going to fall away one by one and we're going to be increasingly isolated. And the last mission in Tractate Zaita says that before Mashiach is going to come, as Gaulis, the exile is coming to an end, which is one of the themes of Tisha B'Av and Yerz Hashem, it says that we're going to find that we have nobody to rely upon. Ella, Avinu Sheba Shemayim, our Father in Heaven. We're not going to have anyone to rely upon at the end of days other than our Father in Heaven. Not the United States, not, uh, not foreign uh, weapon shipments, not, not, not even our military prowess. At the end of days, nothing's going to help us until we all look upstairs and say, Hashem, you're the only one who can help us in past, present, and in the future. Please help us. When we'll have that attitude, Mashiach, is definitely going to come. A lot of things are going on in the world today, and this is something you have to understand, come Tisha B'Av. The world seems to be very, very upside down. Totally upside down. Things that seem crazy, like support of terrorists, seems to be in vogue. People trying to defend their homeland, we seem to be criticized. It's unbelievable. One of the most prominent members of the United States Senate just called Hamas, which is already labeled by her same country, a humanitarian organization. We hear crazy stuff every day. The UN just passed a resolution yesterday, as I'm recording this, saying that the United States uh, and Israel should be condemned for not providing the Iron Dome missile defense system to Hamas. <laughs> Okay? We live in a crazy world where a person can go mashuga from what you hear. And the truth is we also knew from, the, from, from thousands of years ago this is going to happen at the end of days. If you look into Hillam, the book of Psalms, David HaMelech writes this. In the book of Psalms, chapter 140, Pasuk Ches, verse 8, David HaMelech says, Nashek, That Hashem should protect his head on a day of Neshek, on a day of war. And Neshek means war, but if you look in the Rishalmi, Jerusalem Talmud tractate Yevamois. There's two different pshatim, two different explanations. What does David mean? Protect my head on a day of Nashek. Nashek means war. Nashek means can mean war. The Gemara says one explanation means a war of Gog Magog, which is predicted in Tanakh. The other explanation, the Gemara, is a day of Nashek can mean Nashek. Nashek means like Neshika, kissing. What does it mean? David Amela, King David says. Hashem, protect my head on a day of kissing? What does that even mean? Protect my head on a day of kissing? Who's that? What's that about? So the Gemara says in Yerushalmi, Neshek means like, what does Neshek mean? The Shairish, the root, means when two things skim. Kissing is when two people, for example, their, their lips or their cheeks, or whatever, they, they skim once against each other. And the Gemara says in Yerushalmi, Neshek means a day when that world, the next world, and this world are going to skim, they're going to collide. When things that are mitzvahs are treated as averas, treated as being sinful. When good people are treated as being evil. When people who are moral and just are treated as rishoyim, as evil people, that's a day of neshika, that's a day of kissing, of skimming, when matters of the next world and holiness and matters of lowliness in this world are combined and confused. And David HaMelech said this, look this up in the book of Psalms, chapter 140, verse 8. He says, she protect my head, Hashem, Yom Nashek, on a day of Neshek, of Neshika, because a person can go crazy when you live in a world. At the end of days, when people who are moral and good and holy want to learn Tyra, do mitzvahs, live in peace, and they're treated like being the worst murderers and violent people in the world. But you don't have to worry, because all this stuff is, I'm not sharing this over to spook you out, and that's not why it's in Tanakh. We have to know the rest of what the Tyra says. The Tyra makes it 110% clear that a yaim of Tainus, a day of fast, like a day of Tisha B'av, it's not a day just to be hungry and you sit still and you sit off on the side. The function of a Tainus, the function of a fast day in the Jewish calendar, it's very simple. It's a day of tshuva. It's a day of introspection. It's a day to get better. It's a day to improve. And what you need to know 
is that we have one main avoid that we have to work on come this holiday, and that is Avas Yisrael. Avas Yisrael, and the flip side of the coin is make sure we have no sin as chinam. We have to love our fellow Jew. We have to shower our fellow Jew with love unconditionally and no hatred, no hatred for our fellow. The good news is that's not that hard to do. That's not that hard to do because it's very, very easy to love your fellow Jew. It's not hard whether the person's Russian or Bukharian or Ashkenazi or Sephardic or Hasidic or this or that or observant or not. But it's your family. Love them. Love them unconditionally. Shower them with love. Shower them with smiles. Shower them with good deeds. If you do that, that's a specific area that you can work on and focus on, which will counteract all the negativity. And that's all Hashem says we need to do to be misakin, to fix up, to make him here to Hashem. This Tisha of our last one will have in Gaulis, our last one in exile. So I hope this idea has been meaningful to you. I review. Don't, uh, we are living in crazy, upside-down world. It was predicted. We are at the end of the Ichvas of the Mashiach, the end of the era of pre-Mashiach. Not in the pre-Mashiach era, but in the end of that pre-Mashiach era. But it's nothing that we have to get spooked out about. We know the end of the story. Hashem is going to redeem us. It is our avoida, our job in this world to focus on loving each other, giving goodness to each other. And Amir Tz Hashem, this Tisha B'Av should be a reflective, meaning one for you. And uh, the next time I'll do a Tisha B'Av little video or clip, it'll be in Eretz Yisrael when it'll be a Yantif. I thank you very much for tuning in. I wish you a meaningful Tisha B'Av and, and, a, and, a, and a beautiful fast. Thank you.